Okay, good evening everybody. Good evening. Are we all awake? My name's Daniel Williams. Um, I'm delivering the CET Roadshow UK wide um, in conjunction with Peter Black from Orbiter Black and also with the support of Thomas Botlington Trust. Okay, so today we're launching a UK wide roadshow, CET Roadshow for optometrists and opticians to help everyone to see beyond the eyes and empower you guys with the knowledge and support so that you know who to signpost people to. What we're trying to achieve by talking to the optometrists and opticians UK-wide is to help them to see beyond the eyes and make them aware of what services are available to them. And also the, the sight loss sector can be quite confusing, so helping them to realise what is available for patients with sight loss, but equally making them aware of the different job roles out there and what is available for people. I think opticians and optometrists just feel that when they refer somebody, they refer them to the low vision clinic and then that's that done. And in fact, that's not the case. Uh, we are communicators at heart and it is up to us to communicate to our patients with sight loss the resources that are available in terms of sight loss charities, support services, counselling services that all these charities do and the rehabilitation which is a day-to-day -day living scenario. A low vision patient actually is anybody who has lost their driving licence because they're below 6.12 or basically can't see to do the everyday things like read a newspaper. And if you start to think about low vision in that way, there's low vision patients in every practice, all of whom need some form of help and support. It's been great. We're, um, we've been really successful in terms of uh, uh, finding venues at local sight loss associations throughout the country and um, been very heartened to see that a lot of people are interested in coming to, uh, for the free CET events. Um, so there's still plenty more to do and uh, a lot more events to fill. So has, has anyone ever seen a patient who has low vision and referred them to any of them services that we spoke about today? And if not, why not? Well, when we were revising um, the strategy for our charity a few years ago, we realised that what we used to call the sight loss sector was something that eye health professionals didn't identify with because they see themselves as in the eye health or eye care sector. Uh, so we changed our approach and we now talk about the eye health and sight loss sector because we think it's really important that all of the different professional groups uh, providing uh, support to people with or at risk of sight loss are all joined up and all know who each other are. What's your initial thoughts on the simulation specs? You get some thoughts on them? So, um, right, yeah. we have the no worry, that can hold glasses here which are, um, I think, trying to simulate um, RP. Mm -hmm. For myself, it was a reminder of what's available and what resources are are available to all these low vision patients which um, many of the optometrists are not familiar with. Um, I came to get my remaining three points but at the hospital I, I'm in contact with my colleagues who do low vision work. I still I see the odd adults so this has been useful for me. Of uh, community projects, different kinds of people that can be involved in organisations that can actually help them uh, more than what I can. Uh, so I will now be able to refer more of them to the right people that they can get help with. Different uh, resources available for low vision patients, very helpful. Um, I mean, yeah, I've learned very, various things I didn't know about. Tomorrow I've got my colleague who does low vision with me. I'm going to present with certain things I wrote down from today. Um, yeah, yeah, so it's been, it's, been, it's been good. So I would definitely recommend that, that other people attend this kind of a course because it's run by people who have sight loss and it, it's very encouraging to see people that have got the confidence and the information and the, and the intelligence that, that can impart their experience to us and, and so it gives us that kind of uh, belief that, that there's help for, for people out there you know, when, when we think that there isn't. Hoping that you're all going to go away with the key message. And the key message for me is that you will refract, review and refer. So 
So whether you're an optometrist, an optician, or an ophthalmologist, it doesn't really matter. You just need to make sure that you're referring patients on to the right services for support. No patient should leave without any support. We've got to see beyond the eyes, help the patients who need our help, you know, our ordinary, everyday dispensing situation, and also help the patients that currently don't get our help, who are living with sight loss. For me, it's really important that optometrists and opticians get involved, and that's why the CET training is my passion, and that's why I got together with Dan and Peter. I went to Dan's course, Disability Awareness course, came home and thought to myself, right, this needs CET accreditation, got Dan and Peter together, and we are here today. So RNIB um, recently did a survey called My Voice, and within that survey it said that 80% of people were diagnosed with an eye condition weren't offered any emotional support or signposts to any other services. So that for me is a shocking statistic. And on that basis, that's why I'm so passionate about driving this forward to make the optical sector more aware of the services that are available to people with sight loss so that people with sight loss can live a fulfilled, independent life just like everybody else and just like opticians.